morning everybody morning. how are you all today great. not great. Great. great just good great. Great. he's the only one who's great, I'm great. <laughs> well whenever you come to the house of God we should always be great amen, amen. amen. whether you are hurting you are crying or you are in deep in the ditch whatever is your situation in the house of God, there is always fullness of joy. Amen. So in the fullness of joy, you will always laugh. Yes. Like a little baby, forgetting all your sorrows. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And that's what God is going to do for you this morning. Amen. Let's all arise for a word of prayer. Let's lift up our eyes, lift up our heads. And look unto the living God. God is a good God. His grace and mercies endures forever and ever. <coughs> Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus, we come before your holy presence by the blood of the Lamb of the living God. And we come to you by faith. Look down from heaven, Lord. And look upon us. Bend your ears down to hear our prayer. And to hear every whisper that comes from the hearts of your dear children. Look deep into their hearts and know what is inside them. Look into their thoughts, Lord, and know their thoughts. And I pray right now, Spirit of the living God, open their hearts, open their ears, give them an understanding heart and a listening ear, and give them the faith to believe and apply their hearts. And I ask you, this morning, Spirit of the Living God, to give them ears to hear, that they may hear what the Spirit of God is speaking to the churches in these last days. In the name of the blessed Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, everybody. So once again, on this last session that I am here with you, I want to thank our dear Pastor David White for his great kindness to invite me to your wonderful The Gathering Church. Thank you so much. This is my third time that I've been to the Moravian Falls. The first time I came, I don't know which year was that. Do you remember? 2017? Yeah. 2008, wow. 2008. Do you know a man of God who lives nearby called Stephen Brooks? Yeah. So he invited me first for their convention. We stayed here in Morvin Falls, but the convention was held in a different place. And the second time was to the gathering church. And this is the third time. Whether there'll be a fourth time or not, I don't know. Oh, twice? Yeah, twice? So this is the third time. Ah, okay. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. See? Good to have you sitting right in the front. <laughs> Just like uh, Shirley keep on reminding her husband what to say next. <laughs> so you are reminding me what I should. <laughs> Today you are seated right here in case I just call you, huh? <laughs> All right. Let's get to serious business now. Amen. All right? Now, when you come into the house of so some, some house rules first. When you come into the house of God, please make sure all your mobile phones are switched off. You are here to hear the word of God. You are here to hear God speaking to your pastor. I'm just a guest speaker today, 
but your pastor is here every week to minister to you and you 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 don't want to hear what another man is speaking to you through a mobile phone or you don't want to be busy texting or surfing if you like to do that you should go out and do that not sit here and do it see the the moment we will learn to reverence god's glory then you will see god's glory until then no matter how much you sing the roof come down no matter how much you pray nothing will happen not even a slightest spark of a flame will appear in your church because god is holy and the holiness of god cannot dwell with filthiness even the slightest bit of filthiness it will expound his glorious presence they cannot come if he comes every one of you will die so for your sake god does not come and even if he comes it is the least of his presence just the least the least of his presence that comes so we must learn to honor god reverence his glory the moment you set your heart right with the fear of god and with the reverence of god then you will see the shekinah cloud of glory coming down in your church this is not being religious you know throw away that rubbish teaching that's floating in christian churches today when a pastor or any speaker says do this or don't do that you say oh you have been so religious right have you heard that that's rubbish you're not being religious you have been biblical amen, amen everybody amen. it's been biblical the bible calls us to fear god it's a holy god he's not your everyday friend you know some people say oh when i see the lord when i see jesus i'll put my arms around him and we'll just walk by the beach and we'll sing lullaby to each other <laughs> such people talk foolishly like that because you have not seen how the lord jesus looks like you read revelation chapter 1 the very apostle john who had walked hand in hand with the lord jesus for three and a half years who were like buddies who always lied on the bosom of the lord jesus but now when he saw the resurrected lord jesus he fell flat on his face nobody has to say that all your comeliness will destroy without anyone saying anything you will automatically fall down on your face flat that's how much the glory of god carries even now angels who stay in the higher realms of heaven when they come you will do the same thing you will fall to your ground not because you are worshiping the angels because of the glory and the power that accompanies them when they come you read this in the book of daniel in chapter 10 when an angel a mighty angel comes and stands before the prophet daniel he falls down flat he couldn't stand up because of the awesome power that the angels carry we are flesh no flesh can enter into the kingdom of heaven the scripture says that right flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven and no flesh can glory before the presence of god so the day that the corporate church will learn to reverence god and fear god that is the day you will see the shekinah glory coming into your church that's the day so you must purpose in your heart we want to seek the face of god amen and don't just simply say i want to seek the face of god then you need to also put away sin 
So this is the message that I bring to you from the presence of God this morning. My message is entitled, The Seraphim Are Coming. On the 30th of June, 2023, as usual, I was praying one morning at two. I was in South Korea in a prayer mountain, the northern part of South Korea. And uh, as I was kneeling down to pray, I heard the Holy Spirit say, a seraph, see a seraphim is plural, a seraph is singular, cherubim is plural, and a cherub is singular. A seraph wants to talk with you. The moment I heard that, I began to shiver. Because a seraphim, or a seraph or a cherub, they're not ordinary angels. They, are, they stand in the very presence, fiery glory of God. So it's, it's a little scary thing if one of these wants to come and visit you. So as soon as the Holy Spirit told me that, I began to prepare my heart and be still in the presence of God. And shortly, a fiery burning syrup, full of fire, it, is, it seems like the very seraph, the angel, is made of fire. He's just fire all. You, you can see an outline of his figure, outline of his form. His face, his body structure are clearly visible, but at the same time, full of fire, full of fire. You know, I, I, I stay at the church guest house called the peach house and on the ground floor in the living room there is a picture of a fiery horse so every time i come down to make a cup of tea before i while the water is boiling i would stand by the dining table and just take a good long look at that picture because i have seen horses of fire in heaven and the the artist who ever drew it has painted it perfectly. The whole horse was full of fire, made of fire. And that's how the beings in heaven, not everyone, there are some angels that look very ordinary, some angels look gentle and calm. Of course, they all have beautiful eyes of gentleness and calmness. But those who stand in the very holy, glorious presence of God, carry great power and great authority and great anointing. So when this seraph came into my room, he began to give me a word for the church. What is the purpose of their coming? So before I share that part with you, let me build a little foundation. What a seraph is. The word seraph, comes from the Hebrew word sarap, S-A-R-A-P. And it has, it appears seven times in the Old Testament. And it has two meanings. One, a venomous snake. Or a sarap, a six-winged being. So this word applies to either one. And the word Sarap or seraphim is mentioned in the book of Isaiah in chapter 6, verse 2, verse 3, verse 6, and verse 7. And the word sarap strictly means fiery ones. And they literally appear like burning fire. So that's what the name sarap means, a burning fire. Why do they appear like that? Because they stand in the fiery presence of God, who is the consuming fire. A good example of that is found in Exodus chapter 19. When the glory of God came down on Mount Sinai, and three million Israelites saw the burning fire of the glory of God on the top of Mount Sinai. And the scripture says, God descended in the fire. So that's how God looks like. 
light and fire in the ancient hindu scriptures that's how they portray god not like the hinduism that's today where they worship millions of man made gods but in the original hindu scriptures it says god is light god is fire and god has no form no image he's just a glorious being so they all had the true knowledge of god and that's how god is light glory and full of fire not just fire consuming fire please note that the very word consuming fire means it will consume anything right chiefly sin chiefly sin abomination defilement it consumes everything anything that is defiled cannot stand even in the mere presence of the glorious god so the seraph they appear like a human their bodily form looks like a human however on the 25th of june the year 2020 that was the first time i ever had this privilege by the grace of god to see a seraph when i saw the seraph i was very surprised by how they look like because in the in the bible there is no description about how a seraph looks like if you read rebel uh, ezekiel chapter 1 and chapter 10 the prophet ezekiel gives a very detailed description about how a cherubim looks like and in revelation chapter 4 you read about how the apostle paul sorry the apostle john gives a very detailed description of how the living creatures in heaven look like but the prophet isaiah who saw a seraph with his naked eyes did not give a detailed description how they look like so i'm going to tell you how they look like and if you want to look for any black and white scriptures in the bible you will find none so do you believe my do you believe me by faith yes the face of the seraph looks like the face of a seahorse see i told you you will you will find it hard to believe can do you still believe see our problem today is difficult for us to imagine things that we do not know see heaven is full of surprises full of mysteries the uh, each cherub has four heads you try to imagine how it looks like it's not like one head with one neck and then the other head on the right side left side joined together not like that i'll tell you how it looks like if you look at them it will appear one head but four heads how to describe that in human language i always do not know how to describe that it looks like one head with one neck but actually it's four head you can see four at the same time but it's only one neck how is it humanly possible impossible right but in heaven is different the rules of biology are different in heaven <laughs> the laws of physics the laws of science do not work in the heavenly realm do you know the speed of light is 186000 miles per second that's what physics teach you physics 101 teaches you that but you know once i had a visitation from the lord jesus in the year 1994 and he told me he asked me this question so i i thought i was very smart because physics was my cup of tea in school you know so i very quickly answered lord it's 186000 miles per second he looked at me he smiled and said wrong answer i said lord it's the right answer <laughs> that's the right answer our physics books teaches us that he said you are right 
but you are wrong. The speed of light, 186,000 miles per hour, is because of sin. But before sin came, light traveled much faster than 186,000 miles per second. So I asked him, what was the speed of light originally? He said, it is the speed of thoughts. Thoughts. The speed of your thoughts is faster than the speed of light. That's how, that's why angels in the farthest corner of heaven can instantly appear at your sight. Science came quite close. How many star trekkies are here? No. Okay, only a few star trekkies. The rest of you are too young to be a Trekkie fan. Star Trek, Pastor, you have never seen Star Trek? Ah, we have a fan there. Those, are, uh, those of you who have never seen, I suppose you all are holy people. So in the Star Trek uh, drama series from the 60s and the 70s, they came quite close to explaining those spiritual realities. They call a wormhole. Have you heard of the word wormhole? Yeah. Or hyperspace? Yeah. See, all this comes very close to the real thing. There are such things in the spiritual realm like that, but not like how it is explained on the earth. Something like that, but not like that. So anyway, the face looked like a seahorse, and the body was long, looked like a serpent. Serpent. You know what's a dragon? You know how long a dragon looks like? Smaller one, smaller version. And they have six wings. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 2. And they fly. So this. And interest, interestingly, the word serap in the original Hebrew is also used for fiery serpents. You find this mentioned in Numbers chapter 21 verses 6 and 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 15 and Isaiah chapter 14 verse 29 and chapter 30 verse 6. I perceive in my spirit now there are some of you here who find all this uh, description that I just gave about the seraphim too far stretch. I have one simple counsel for you. Just put it aside. That doesn't matter. How they look like doesn't matter. What matters is their function. When you come to heaven, you will get the joyous privilege to meet them. Then, then you will remember my description and you will feel at ease. But for now, don't let this bother you. Don't let this bother you because my description of how they look like are irrelevant to the message that I'm bringing to you this morning. That is irrelevant. Put it aside. Don't let this, that become a stumbling block to you to hear what God wants to speak to you this morning. So, whenever the nation of Israel strayed away from God, God sent these fiery serpents in the Sinai Peninsula to inflict them as a form of judgment, as a penalty for sin. So the natural fiery serpents, fiery, why they are called fiery? Because when they stink, it sends a fiery sensation all throughout the body. That's what biology says about those serpents in the Sinai Desert. Your whole body will burn with fire and they die. Now the seraphim, why they appear as a burning fire is because it is connected to the holiness and the fire of God. They stand, they stand. Not only they stand, they stay, they, ab they abide and they reside in the very glorious 
holy atmosphere or presence of the Almighty God. And in Isaiah chapter 60, oh sorry, chapter 6 verse 1 and 2, you read that they dwell around the throne of God. Not only around the throne of God, like the cherubim, but they also fly above the throne of God. That seem to be their dwelling places, above the throne of God. And each one of them have six wings. See, not two, like you are accustomed to have heard in the past. Ordinary angels have two wings. The seraphim have six wings. The cherubim have four wings. So they all vary differently. So there are enough scriptures to give us some idea that not all angels have just two wings. There are some angels who have no wings. In case if you wonder how they fly, if Superman can fly, they can fly. <laughs> and they seem very fierce, but at the same time, have a very benign, kind look in their eyes. Their appearance is very strict, very fiery, very frightening, very intimidating. But when you look at their eyes, full of tender love, like the eyes of the Lord Jesus. Every being in heaven have that look because, because they are filled with the love of God. The love of God is everywhere in heaven and in every created being in heaven they are flooded with the love of God even the trees the waters the leaves the birds in heaven all are full with the love of God even the little fishes okay, let's not go there <laughs> say I almost strayed <clears throat> now Flying around the throne of God, they, <coughs> excuse, <coughs> excuse me, they are the sanctifiers of God's throne. And they circle around the throne of God crying or praising, holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and who is to come. And for eons and eons of ages, they go around and around and around, just praising and crying, holy, holy, holy. So many years ago, I read the testimony of a certain man of God in uh, the US. Have you heard of this man of God called Jesse Duplantis? Yes. This brother Jesse Duplantis had a once in a lifetime experience of being caught up to heaven. So he, he, he describes this in his book. And he came near the throne of God and he saw this seraphim flying around the throne of God, crying, holy, holy, holy. And he stood there for quite some time to see they flew nonstop, just crying, holy, holy, holy. So after some time, he got tired of watching them. You know, if you, if on, in your Sunday service, if you keep on repeating a song again and again and again, soon you'll get tired, right? And you feel bored. Why sing this song again and again and again? Come on, change the song. <laughs> right? You'll feel that, you know? So, Jesse Duplantis felt that, and then he asked his attending angel, why do they just simply go around saying one word again and again? Don't they have other words to say? Say, this is how we humans think. See, even when you go to heaven, you think like that. Because you are still in your unsanctified mind. But when you die and go to heaven, it's different. You'll be totally changed. But people who have visitations to heaven in present lives, their minds are still in the unregenerate mind, and he thinks very human level. So the attending angel very calmly explained to him why they are praising God with the same sentence again and again. So let me demonstrate to you like this. So in the end, they go around, the, let's suppose this is the throne of God, right? When they fly around, they look at God and they see a facet 
of his character and they get so excited claim holy 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 and praising god they come around the second time they see another facet and they cry holy 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 and they go around they come another oh holy 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 jesse was shocked and he asked them how long have they been doing that oh they said from time in memorial he was shocked from eons of time the angels are seeing different different facet character of god each revolution they make around him so you tell me how can you limit god we are so foolish in our understanding that is why each time when the lord perform a miraculous act for his disciples he always asked them this one question where is your faith o ye of little faith each time he has demonstrated an act they still come back to the zero faith right they still come back to the zero faith and they are full of doubt and they think god cannot perform any other miracle they think that that's all he can do see we must learn to take the limits of our mind i'll tell you one truth today the day you learn to break the boundary in your mind that's the day you will step into the miraculous yeah this is your mind that prevents you from stepping into the miraculous it's your mind because it always sprouts doubt it always sprouts unbelief what if god doesn't do a miracle is that your problem is that your problem it's not your problem your job is to pray for the sick it's god's job to heal the sick so why are you worried about his job tell me you take care of your business god will take care of his business you know you need not worry about him he can take care of him he's a big boy so when you when the school of evangelism is conducted here you step out into the highways and byways and you tell the people i'm going to pray for you don't don't preach christ first just tell them is there any need that i can pray for you and when god performs a miracle then you tell them who did that miracle i was once i mean not i was i once was meeting with my secretary this happened 40 years ago at kfc do you have kfc in mor no. we don't have you are in a forest yeah kfc here in moravi falls really huh ah not here this is forest this is a forest where prophetic people live either in the desert in california lancaster or in the forest here okay so i met with my secretary and we were going through works and she was telling me explaining to me all the works that she had done and then we were eating and while we were eating i noticed a woman with two big bags in her hands walk into the restaurant and she stood for a moment at the door and she looked at my direction and then she came and sat right across our table and we went on discussing and to to prove a point or to mention a point i took out my bible and showed my secretary a scripture as soon as i did that that lady came over to our table and asked me a question are you having a bible study can i join you all so i said i'm not having a bible study now but i'll be happy to answer whatever questions you have 
after we are through. She said, all right, please, enjoy your meal. So she ordered her, her set of meal, and she was eating, and we were eating. When we were done, I invited her, please come, come and join us. I asked her, how can I help you? So she stood up, opened her handbag, and she took out three booklets. One was a book on Hinduism, one was a book on Islam, and one was a book on Buddhism. And this woman is an Indian woman from the northern part of India, where there are people called Sikhs. Have you seen Indian men with turbans on their head? She comes from that state. So they are called Punjabis. Say everybody. Punjab. Punjab. Very good. You, you qualified to become missionaries to India. <laughs> so she said, I'm a Punjabi, but I want to know the truth. So I'm reading all these books. When I entered into the restaurant, when, when I looked at you, I saw a glow of light all over you. And I thought in my heart that you must be someone very holy, very saintly, to whom I can ask for counsel. I looked at her, I said, lady, you have come to the right person. She said, sit down. So I began to share my testimony how from a Hindu, I became a Christian. As I was speaking to her, the Holy Spirit opened my spiritual eyes and I looked into her heart and saw her life. From the day that she grew up from a child till the moment that she walked into the restaurant. What happened in her life? She just had a big fight with her husband. He slapped her and she packed her handbag, I mean, packed her clothes, left her house, not knowing where to go, and she just ended up at the KFC. When I described all that, she cried and she cried and she cried, and she asked me, how do you know? How do you know? Right to the last detail, when my husband stretched his hand to slap me, you describe it exactly like you stood there in my house and you saw all this event. I know, I knew her, I got her attention now. So I asked her, have you seen me in your life before? She said, no. Do you think I have seen you? She said, no chance. Then how did I know all this? She said, that's what I'm asking you. How do you know? I said, there is a God called Jesus Christ. He knows all about your life. And I explained to her about the Lord Jesus Christ. And right there, in KFC, she accepted Jesus Christ as a savior. Not in a church, right there, in the highways and in the byways. She accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as a savior. So you need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Not just the preaching of the word, but the accompanying signs and wonders and miracles. When you step out by faith, when you stretch your hand by faith, miracles will take place. Yes. Amen. Amen. All you have to do is one thing. Crucify this dumb brain. Crucify it. Refuse to entertain any unbelief. Just say in your heart, Lord, I'm going to obey your word. I'm going to lay hands on the sick and pray for them. And it's your job to heal the sick. Amen. 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 One of your church member, who's the wife of the youth leader, she's a Bhutanese girl from DK, right? Where is she? Kanchachuri. Where is she? Far away in the nursery. Okay. Far away. Every person I called, they are no nowhere. It's okay. It's okay. You know, she, when I first went to her country, she was a five-year-old girl. Wow. I, when I spoke in her church, she was a five-year-old girl who saw me when I came to her church, and she narrated the incident to me when I first, the first night I came and she cooked for me. And she grew up attending all our youth conferences in India, got filled in the Holy Spirit, got charged up in the spirit, received the fire of God in our meetings. 
So today I have an investment in your church. Now, when I first went to her country, Bhutan, I remember the very first, in, very first meeting that I had in, the, in, the, in their church. After the service, the pastor asked me to go and pray for one of his church members who is dying. It's a young woman with two little kids, very small kids, and she's been diagnosed with some very strange incurable disease and the doctor said she was going to die in three days so when I when the pastor took me to the hospital I saw this woman frail and skinny she's just bones lying on the bed hospital bed with the shadow of death all over her face when I looked at that looked at her whatever little fit that I had just flew away you know and the, but the pastor has great faith in me. He said, Sadhuji, Sadhuji is an honorable title that they give to men of God or older people, you know. And he said, no, when you pray, God will certainly hear your prayer. I said, all right, let's pray. I, when I prayed, I laid my hands and I saw in the spirit the hand of the Lord Jesus. Now, I, I'm sharing this to encourage you what will happen when you do the same. I'm not bragging about my spirituality. I'm just sharing this to provoke you to a holy jealousy that you can do the same and this will also happen to you when you do it. So when I stretch my hand, I saw the hand of the Lord Jesus come upon my hand. And when I prayed, a fiery anointing from the Lord's hand came upon my hand and f entered into her body. And when, when I prayed through, I felt in my spirit that my prayer was heard. But in the natural, nothing happened to the woman. She was still as dead as she first looked like. But I told her husband and her pastor, God has touched this woman, not to worry. So I left. Six months later, I came to a town on the border of India and this nation for a, a three or five days of convention. And during the convention, there was one young woman who was like an antelope, a deer, that was literally jumping here and there, serving us. Serving all the men of God. She was literally jumping everywhere. She was not even walking, you know. She was a bundle of joy, full of joy, full of happiness, just jumping everywhere, serving us. And I noticed this. I thought, oh my God, this must be, in her former life, she must have been an antelope. <laughs> now, don't go out saying that I believe. <laughs> don't quote me out of context. Don't cut that portion and... Post on YouTube. <laughs> Today's Christians are good at all that, you know? Right? That was just a jest about former life. And about two days later, the senior pastor who invited me to the convention, while we were eating, this woman was still running around serving everyone. Huh? He asked me, do you recognize that lady? I said, no. Who is she? This is the woman you prayed for in Bhutan. You know what happened? The doctor said she will die in three days, right? She was healed on the third day. Totally healed. All things in her body totally restored. And she rose up as if there was nothing in her body. She's still alive today living in Nepal. Her husband was a chief cook working in the palace of the king. So, you can do the same. Amen. Amen. So when you go out after the school of evangelism, don't just hear and do nothing. You need to go out into the highways and byways. Knock, knock on people's doors 
and say, is there anything that I can pray for you all? Even an unbeliever will want a prayer. They will want a prayer. They will welcome a prayer as long as you're not pushy. They say, we are, I'm here to pray, you, pray for you and bless you. And then as you start praying, the Lord Jesus will come and stand by your side. And the power of God will flow through you and a miracle will take place. Then they will ask you, something happened to me. Something happened to me. Then you open your mouth and you preach the Lord Jesus. And you will win souls and bring into the house of God. Amen. Amen. So, the seraphim are sanctifiers of the throne of God. And they fly around the throne of God praising the glory, holiness of God. And when they come, they also sanctify a person. Because that's what they carry. The anointing that they carry, they sanctify a person. By the way, angels also are anointed. Like we are anointed. If you read in Ezekiel chapter 28, concerning Lucifer, the scripture says, you were an anointed cherub on the mountain. So, Angels also have an anointing according to their function, according to their works. They have individual anointings. So the anointing upon a seraphim is to impart holiness, to sanctify a person, bring them to a place of sanctification, cleanliness, holiness. And they, like the cherubim, walk on coals of fire in the secret places of God. There is a place in heaven, according to Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 14, where it's called a place full of coals of fire. And for some secret reason, which is not explicitly mentioned in the Bible, cherubim like Lucifer before he fell, they walk on the coals of fire. Why they walk on that, I do not know yet, but I'm praying to find that out. When they find that out, when I come a few years later next time, I will share with you. If you have the faith to believe. I'm sure by then you'll be full of faith to believe. Now the seraph, now, from now onwards, I'm going to share with you verbatim what they spoke to me. So every word that I'm going to read to you now is what I transcribed very quickly when they spoke to me. Now, now the seraph spoke to me. We dwell in the holy presence of God. And that is the reason why we appear as burning fire. Once, you know, in Exodus chapter 34, you read that when the prophet Moses came down from the mount of God, his face shone with fire light, right? So, I was always curious to know how that did that happen? So once I had the privilege in the heavenly realm to meet with the Saint Moses and I asked him this question. I said, Sir, how is it that your face glowed with light when you were talking with God? He said, when I saw God, he appeared as a consuming ball of light and fire. And I was in his presence for 40 days and 40 nights. That is earth time. Which means it's a continuous stretch. Non-stop. Day and night. No sleep. No rest. No breaks. Continuous stretch. See, when you are in the presence of God or in the heavenly realm, time does not exist. It doesn't exist. On earth time, it was 40 days and 40 nights, but in heaven, it will be just minutes. Minutes. We once had a speaker at our conference in Israel, an American lady from uh, Kansas. She is the one that I mentioned yesterday who had an experience in hell. And uh, so I, I asked her during our private conversation, according to earth time, how long do you think you were in hell? She hesitated to answer that question. I said, look, it's just you and me here now. 
Just please tell me frankly. She said, my pastor told me not to mention all that publicly. I said, your pastor gave you wrong counsel? And after a little prodding, she said, 70 years. 70 years. If she would count earth time, it was 70 years. This woman literally experienced hell. You should have her in your church. Do you Have you heard of her? Laurie Ditto? Your life will never be the same when you hear her. She literally not only saw, experienced hell. And why was she in hell? She was not an unbeliever, you know. She was born again, baptized in water, filled in the Holy Spirit, had all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, chiefly the gift of prophecy, and she was on staff in a very highly respected prophetic ministry in the US, on staff. One day, she felt like she was dying, and her body, spirit went straight down to hell. What, why was she sent there? Because of unforgiveness. That was a chief sin, unforgiveness. Remember the scripture where the, where the Lord said, if you will not forgive another, your father in heaven will not forgive you. So if your father does not forgive you, then your sin remains. If your sin remains, you cannot enter into heaven. Then you'll be cast into hell. So don't keep any unforgiveness in your heart. It will destroy your soul. Get rid of it. Whether you are justified to keep it or not, it's not worth Throw it away. Get rid of it. So that you can live a clean life. So that you can be with God for eternity and not be with Satan for eternity. Remember Desmond Tutu I mentioned yesterday? Don't be like him. He is so foolish to say, I'd rather be in hell with the gays than in heaven where there are no gays. What an idiotic man he was to talk like that. I don't care. He can be an archbishop, he can be the pope, he can be anything. See, this is basic theology. Right? Basic theology. Doesn't he know basic theology? You don't need to be a theologian to know basic theology or basic scriptures. Any little baby can read the book of Revelation, can know the meaning of it. Every abominable thing is not allowed in heaven. Period. You don't need any commentaries to explain to you what it means, you know? Right? So why didn't an archbishop know this simple truth? But that's how they have become deranged in their spiritual mind. Deranged. Corrupted. That's how much the devil has deceived them into thinking. Everything is okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. So we dwell in the presence of God. We appear as burning fire. Then he looks straight into my eyes and he asks me a few questions. Do you know who your God is? And I was trembling now and dare not answer his questions. Do you know who your God is? He is a consuming fire. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 24. He is holy. He is almighty. He created all things. He rules and reigns over all things. This is how great your God is. Not just a carpenter from Nazareth. I've seen some cars in the US where they carry a bumper sticker. My boss is the carpenter from Nazareth. Have you seen, have you seen those bumper stickers? That is the most sacrilegious 
thing to say my boss is a carpenter your boss is not the carpenter your god is the god of heaven is not your boss by the way see how lowly christianity is in the us you have no understanding of the glory of god or the holiness of god you have absolutely no knowledge that is why you make bumper stickers like that that is why you are very careless callous attitude towards the living god you do not know who your god is he is holy he is consuming fire he is the great almighty god the 3 million israelites who saw the great awesome works of god with their own naked eyes even they could not believe all that for 40 years they did not believe all that they kept on rebelling against god if they who saw could not believe how much more you who did not see but you are without excuse because you have the word of god you are without excuse the children of israel did not have the word of god though they saw they did not have the word but you have the word of what they saw and what is to come so you are not without excuse they can be forgiven they can be excused but not us you cannot say i do not know you cannot say my pastor didn't preach on all these things you cannot say my church did not preach all things you have the word of god with you you have it with you if not a old fashioned bible you have a digital bible with you 24/7 all the time so the question will be asked next why didn't you read why didn't you read so what excuse will you give next that i'm busy a very godly pastor of a certain church was once invited by one of his church member to visit their home for tea so this happened in england in england when they say tea it either means for lunch or dinner so you don't be mistaken that's just tea so you know pastors like i told you the other day they are two kind and they are very shepherd they always want to visit their members to inquire how they are doing they are just like a big teddy bear daddy you know not only they are teddy bear with a big heart and a softy fluffy heart they just like to hug all the church members and give them tender loving care that's what pastors are usually so this pastor and his wife went to this church members house for a meal and they had a delicious meal and the family the church member was quite well to do so they had nice porcelain cups and saucers plates and everything so once dinner is done the next is tea that's english you go to any english home a meal is followed by a tea is followed by a meal so they serve tea on a beautiful nice ceramic cup and then the teaspoon was so exquisitely made with fine china with engravings and all that so they all had tea and then the pastor stood up he prayed a prayer of blessing for the family and he left and when the woman of the house was cleaning the table she realized to her great shock the pastor had stolen her spoon she fumed with anger how dare the pastor stole that limited edition spoon she cannot buy another spoon to replace the spoon because it was limited edition you know the limited edition they don't make it anymore right she was so mad this pastor talks holy in the church he says thou shall not steal and he himself has stolen she was so mad she told her husband look the pastor has stolen and she took a picture of the missing spoon and she was going to post it on facebook my pastor the thief 
So good thing was she decided, let me confront the pastor first, then I'll post it on social media. <laughs> so, the, so the following Sunday, you see, that's a godly thing to do, right? Yes. Go and talk to your pastor. Why did you steal my spoon? If you had asked me, I would have given to you. So the following Sunday, she sat in the church, and when the pastor got up to preach, she could not hear him. She was just boiling with anger. When she looked at him, she remembered thief. <laughs> the word written all over his forehead, thief. <laughs> and somehow, she did not have the heart to confront the pastor. See, in the Anglican church or in the Methodist church, the pastor will stand at the doorway to greet all the church members as they are leaving, you know. So when the pastor came to, sh when she crossed by to sh and the pastor stretched his hand to shake the hand, she just walked away. She was angry, you know. So she thought, okay, the next Sunday I'm going to confront the pastor. And the next Sunday came and she did not confront the pastor. Ten months passed by. But anger was still there. Anger was still there. So finally, after 10 months, she decided enough is enough. Let me settle the score today. This Sunday, I'm going to confront the pastor for good. And sure enough, she did that. She, so when the pastor shook her hand, she hold his hand tightly so that he will not run away. And she said, Pastor, why did you steal my teaspoon? You know, during the 10 months, the pastor went to many people's house. So he was wondering, what spoon? Which house? Which meal? And this lady recounted that day, what food she cooked. She could remember what dishes she cooked that day. After 10 months. Amazing memories women have. Huh? So, oh, then the pastor, oh, yes, 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 I remember, I remember. And he looked at her and he said, my dear sister, I did not take your spoon, I left it in your Bible. <laughs> you understand? For 10 months, the Bible was lying on the table and she did not open the Bible. Which means she never read the Bible at all. Never read the Bible at all. So the pastor purposely left the teaspoon inside the Bible to see whether she reads her Bible or not. <laughs> it was 10 months that day, but how many years was it? Right? How many years was it? So do people do today in the church. You come with free hands, you sit in the church because scriptures are flush on the screen. So why carry a Bible for? You may be like that woman who never opened your Bible. So people of God, I say to you with love today, the question will be asked you, why didn't you read? The question will be asked you, why didn't you read? Not, did you hurt? Not that, not did you hurt? The question is, why didn't you read? You are without excuse. Without excuse. The next thing the seraph said is, we are coming to cleanse the churches. <coughs> that is their chief work. Isaiah chapter 4 verse 4. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning... That's the word syrup there. This is their work. Cleansing, washing, purging, refining, purifying. 
When they come, they will cleanse the churches. When we come and stand, we will command holiness in the church. That's their work. Those who respond in repentance will be cleansed and sanctified. An example, Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. When the prophet Isaiah saw the glory of God, he was so deeply convicted of something that was still lacking in him, and he cried out to God. See, the prophet Isaiah was a good man, a prophet of God, but there were some areas in his life that were still not dealt with. Now, take note of that. He was a good man, he was a prophet of God, who saw visions of God, heard from God, flowed in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, he stood in the office of a prophet, yet there were some areas of his life that were not dealt with. That is why he cried, I'm a man of unclean lips. Watch what you say. Watch what you say. Do you use your lips to bless people or curse people? Do you use your lips to talk good about others or criticize, gossip, backbite, murmur? What do you use your lips for? Watch your lips. You may need to pray like how prophet Isaiah prayed, cleanse my lips. So as soon as he prayed that, we read this in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5. A seraph came flying in an instant from the glorious presence of God with a coal of fire in his hands. He took that coal of fire from the altar of God. You read about the altar of God in heaven in Revelation chapter 8. Verse 1, 2, and 3. All the furniture that God asked the prophet Moses to make were replicas of the true in heaven. So the coal of fire he put on the lips of the prophet Isaiah and he cleansed them and sanctified them. I personally had an experience like this on the April the 15th of this year. 2023, while I was praying and repenting of some, some of my sins and shortcomings. As I was doing that, I saw a seraph come and stand before me. He appeared totally full of light. light in the, the light is not like the color of the light that you see on the bulbs that come from the tube lights, like that, you know. It is lightning white unadulterated color of the light. Unadulterated light. Lightning. Fire. And I, as soon as he stood before me, I felt a cleansing and sanctifying wave come from that syrup all over me. It flew, it came upon my head and went all down my feet, cleaning, sanctifying, and refining me. That is the work of the seraphim. When they come, they will sanctify a believer. They will sanctify a church. We will cause, now the first I read was, when we come, we will command holiness in the church. Those who respond in repentance, this is first category, category one. Those who respond in repentance, will be cleansed and sanctified. Category two, if you don't respond in repentance, then we will come to cause to remove such people who desecrate the temple of God. They'll be removed. Let me give you two examples. Leviticus chapter 10 verses one to five. Of the four sons of Aaron, two of them, Nadab and Abihu, they were, un uh, listen carefully, they were washed, meaning water baptism, they were anointed, meaning they were filled in the Holy Spirit, and they wore 
the garment of the priesthood. So they were called. So called, washed, sanctified, anointed, serving in the ministry. Yet, when they did something that they were not told to do, or they were not called to do, they were in the right place, but doing the wrong thing. Fire came from the presence of God and killed them. You know, only that day when the seraph came and explained to me the scripture, then I understood where the fire came from. All the years I used to wonder, where did the fire come from? This is example number one. Example number two, Acts chapter five, verses one to 10. A couple called Ananias and Sapphira, they lied in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Boldly lied. Even though, now listen, even though the apostle Peter gave them opportunity to repent, he asked them, are you really sure? That was an opportunity for them to recant the lie. If Ananias had recanted the lie, he would have been alive. But he again, the second time, he chose to lie. Why? So that he can have his name right on the top of the board. Ananias donated so much of money for the church building fund. He wanted a name, wanted a fame. Because Barnabas had earlier sold all his property and gave it to the apostle. So the apostle Peter read out what Barnabas did. So Ananias thought, I too want a name like that. So that just like the flags that hang around this church, he wanted his picture to hang on the wall of the church. Instantly, when the apostle Peter spoke, he died. Three hours later, his wife came and she repeated the same lie. She too dropped dead. That is these angels who spew fire from their lips. We remove such people by our sanctifying fire. You know, something happened about five years ago when I first went to Tanzania and never in my life have I given a strict warning message to a church or to a congregation for three days in a row. Even I, I wondered how is it that my voice has changed. I was like roaring like a lion for three entire days. And the message was against false prophets. False prophets in the nation and false prophets in Africa. I, you know, I always like to be a gentleman, never call up by names. But that day, the Lord told me, name them. Name the false prophets in the nation. And one of the message was, if you do not repent, you will fall dead while you are in the pulpit. Even if you are young, you will drop dead, but the doctors will diagnose that you died of heart attack. One week later, several pastors began to die one by one. One by one. The pastor who invited me sent me all the record. And all those pastors died while they were preaching. Suddenly they clutched their, they clutched their heart and they dropped dead. And sure enough, medical science said they died of heart attack. But now I know what really happened. It was a seraphim who comes and stands there and they spew fire from their mouth. Such judgment from God. And the same thing has been happening in the US. You just that you didn't know. Why are some pastors being exposed of their adulterous lifestyle when it was going on for a long time because the time came for God to judge them. That, that time came. God gave them a long rope 
of time, space of time for to repent, to put away that sin, to judge themselves so that you will not judge. They refuse to put it away. Because why? Grace of God. Grace of God. See, when you sin once and nothing happens, you get a little bolder. And you sin the second time, nothing happens. And you sin the third time, nothing happens. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, nothing happens to you. You feel in your heart, this is okay. This is okay. And you go on sinning. In God's great mercy, he will send someone to speak to you. Either directly or indirectly in a message. And it, you will know that one particular word will strike your heart. Will convict you. If you harden your heart, then comes judgment. You harden your heart. Suddenly, their sins are exposed. And they leave the pulpit in shame. Or they just simply resign themselves and walk away. The seraphim are coming. And they are going to cleanse the church. No one can stand before the holiness of God. No one. That is why the Lord God, Lord God told the prophet Moses, You cannot see my face. For no man shall see me and live. Exodus chapter 33 verse 20. See the fullness of the glory of God. No one. No one can. If you ever hear anyone say, including me, that I saw the Lord Jesus. It is because the Lord shrouds his glory. And it comes in a simple form. We just see a similitude of the Lord. And not the real thing. The real glory you cannot see. No man can see. At least not now. Maybe in heaven. In our glorified state. The scripture says we'll see the father. We'll see God. That will be possible. Not now at this present time. When we come. From the holy presence of God. Those who live in sin will fall dead. So you better check your hearts. Check your life. And remove every leaven from your lives and from your miss and from your church. Remove every leaven. So that when they come, they will purify you and bring you one step higher. And not judge you. But those who love the holiness of God will be sanctified. They love the holiness of God. They love repentance. They love the justice of God. They will be purified. Isaiah, like what happened to the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6 verses 5 to 7. So church, arise. Wake up. Behold, your king is coming. Bride, get ready. Your bridegroom is coming to receive you. Amen. So this is the word that the seraph gave me for the churches. So in conclusion, I want to say, God is going to purify his church because he's coming soon. The bridegroom is coming to Take his bride away. And the bride cannot be a corrupted bride. You have heard this tons of time, right? But what have you done? Nothing. But let me tell you with great love today. Time will delay no longer. You have heard tons of times in the past. But now we are in the end times. You cannot leave this church this morning not doing anything about it. Remember I told you on the first day, I had no intention to coming to Morivin Falls. But the Lord compelled me. He said, go, go. Remember that? 
And I told you on the first day that I'm here on assignment. This is the assignment to bring this word to you. God is going to purify his church. The fire is not for the cleansing of sin. The first sin that you already repented of. But the fire is for the purging and refining. Purging and refining your soul, your spirit. It deals with the consequences of sin in one's life. Not the very original sin that you already repented of when you got saved. But the consequences of sins that we do every day in our life. So the fire comes to deal with that and the pollution that sin causes in our life. Our thought life, our speech, hearing, our actions. You need that purging and the refining every day. Every day. The roots of sin and the effects of sin are so deep in many people's lives that only God can heal and restore you. No one else can do that for you. Only he can do that for you. Things that you have struggled for years and haven't been able to overcome, this fire from the seraphim will help you to overcome. One word, one spew of a flame of fire from the seraphim will set you free from all those bondages for good. This transformation is much needed as we enter into these last days. Let's read a scripture in closing. Please turn your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 3. And we will read verse 16 and 17. Luke chapter 3 verses 16 and 17. John answered saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I comes, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the shaft he will burn with fire unquenchable. Two things are going to take place in these last days. A gathering and a burning. Two things. A gathering and a burning. So this afternoon, as we kneel to pray, you are going to make a choice. Whether you are going to be gathered or burned. Let's all kneel down before the presence of God. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great art thou, how great art thou. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great art thou. How great art thou. People of God, as you kneel down before the presence of the living God, check your heart. Check your mind. 
check your thoughts are there any unforgiveness lurking inside you are there any things you are holding against another are there some secret sins you are still practicing in your life that no one knows are there some bondages in your life addictions in your life that you struggle to overcome confess them today today is your day of deliverance today is your day of sanctification today is your day of refining today is your day of purging today is your day and not only the people who are here even this church the gathering church to be sanctified thank you wonderful lord jesus i hear the holy spirit say ask the people to truly lay their all before me search deep down into your heart and look for hidden sins hidden leaven inside you pride arrogance stubbornness whatever is deeply hidden inside you you know that you don't need any prophetic words to come to you you know your heart confess them now you can either be gathered to the barn of god or be bundled up as chaff to be burned it's your choosing today so confess confess set your heart right before god you take it out from your heart and lay it down at the feet of the lord and as the serap will stand beside you and burn you today is going to be the day of sanctification for you today is the day that's going to be a day of purification for you today is the day that's going to be a cleansing day for you today today right now so yield yield yourself make a total surrender a total yielding that you will be totally cleansed right now <clears throat> you should not be like nadab and abihu who were doing the wrong thing doing a wrong ministry that they were not called by god to do they were in the right place but doing the wrong thing you should not be like ananias and sapphira lips that are unclean because they lied you should not be a double minded person unstable in your ways a mouth that talks haughtily a mouth that talks arrogantly pridefully a mouth that despises others 
cleanse, ask for forgiveness. Have your hands done righteous works or unrighteous works? Have you used your hands for righteous works or unrighteous works? I see right now flaming fires hovering over the top of this church right now. And I see many seraphim all lined up from one end of the wall near the ceiling right up to another end of the wall. They are ready and they are lifting up their hands. There appears like a sword in their hands and the sword is also full of fire, a flaming sword. And I can clearly see their bodies. It's full of fire, full of fire. They are ready to come. They're standing here, ready to come down in your midst to sanctify you, to, to cut you from your bondages. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I see them coming down right now. Several of them are already down now. As you yield, they are coming down. Thank you. Thank you, wonderful Holy Spirit. Thank you, wonderful Holy Spirit. I ask you, Holy Spirit, you are the one who is asking the seraphim to come and to cleanse the people of God. So now I ask you, Holy Spirit, Give the command that they will all come down and go among the people of God, starting from the pastor of this church and all the way down to the lowest person in the church. Can somebody have all the children be brought into this church right now? Quickly, please. Lord, I pray now. Let your seraphim Move among each and every one of them right now, Lord. Right now. From the first person of this church, the pastor, right to the baby in this church, let your sanctifying fire flow all over them right now. Thank you. In answer to my prayer, I see all the seraphim now standing at every place in this church, every place and among you. So yield yourself, yield yourself. And I pray right now, Spirit of the living God, let the fires from the seraphim come upon the people of God. Let them feel the burning fire come all over them right now. Let them feel the fire flow from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet right now. Right now. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let your people tangibly feel the physical fire sweeping all over them. Even upon the little children, Lord. I pray right now. Let your fires Purging fires, refining fires, cleansing fires come all over the little ones. All over them. All over them. Let their lips be burned. Let their eyes be burned. Let their ears be burned. Sanctify them. Let their hands be burned. I pray, Spirit of the living God, let them feel in physical form, tangibly, the fire of God all over them. Thank you, Lord. Give them an experience like they've never experienced in their life before, right now. Right now. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. I see one particular seraphim flying all over the, this church, 
every ceiling, every place of the church, and he's lighting with the fire. He's setting them on fire, cleansing, sanctifying this physical place. Sen sanctifying, cleansing this physical place. Every defilement that took place here, because of words spoken, because of actions done in the secret, without the knowledge of the pastor, secret dealings, secret words, secret actions that have defiled this place are being sanctified now. Sanctified now. Sanctified now. Let it flow. Fire of God. All over this place. All over the children. All over them. Sanctify them, Lord. Sanctify them. Let it flow and flow. Purging them thoroughly. Purging them thoroughly. Inside the inner being. Upon their eyes. Upon their ears. Upon their lips. Let there be a burning sensation. Let them experience it. On their lips and on their hands. Sanctify them, Lord. Sanctify them. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. Sanctify them. Sanctify them. Sanctify. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. Every place, even the very physical structure of this church. Sanctify them, Lord. Sanctify the curses that were spoken against this church, that this church will become nothing, that it, all the members will be lost, and even the curse that put against Pastor White, that he will be out of a job. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command those false words be burned, be burned to ashes. Be burned right now. I command in the name of the Lord Jesus. This building be sanctified. Sanctified. Be purged. Be cleansed. Thank you wonderful God. Thank you wonderful God. Thoroughly. 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 Let your seraphim. Cleanse everyone here. Cleanse everyone. Thank you, wonderful God. Thank you, wonderful God. From the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, let them experience these purging fires. Flow like waves after waves after waves all over them. All over them. Oh, thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. I too physically feel the fire is flowing in my hands. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. Whatever may be your needs, whatever may be your sicknesses, whatever may be your diseases, I command in the name of the Lord Jesus, let the fires cleanse them. I command in the name of the Lord Jesus, the bondages in their lives be broken right now. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. Flow, Holy Spirit. Flow. This is not enough, Holy Spirit. This is not enough. I pray for another wave. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Fires. Flow, flow, all over them, all over them, all over them, like ocean waves, like cloud, billows of cloud, let the fires flow, all over them, all over them, all over them, all over them, all over them. Let them be thoroughly purged. <coughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Keep on flowing. 
keep on flowing flow into the innermost being the innermost the innermost sanctify them sanctify their eyes sanctify their eyes and even the eyes of their spirit sanctify the eyes of the spirit that they will be able to see spiritually from this day onwards thank you wonderful god thank you wonderful god oh glorious god oh glorious god oh glorious god thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus thank you holy father thank you holy spirit oh you are a good god your grace and mercy endures forever and ever come on lift up your holy hands talk to your father in the spirit for a moment now talk to your father in the spirit for a moment now you may stand to your feet if you like just lift up your holy hands talk to your father in the spirit in unknown tongues for a moment now lead pana speak to the lord right now speak to him right now today his cleansing fires his sanctifying fires is in this mix pura bashikele berianda raba shikele us who are filled in the spirit speak in the spirit right now pura bashikele berianda raba shukurubo there is a blanket of holiness there is in this place the fear of the lord is in this place Kira ba shokoro mori andara ba shikele be ra ba shokoro bo re ra ba she ra ba ria koro bo li ra ba shikele be koro bo shikara ba ri andara ba the word of god says cry unto the lord and you will be saved today as you cry unto the lord as you open up your mouth and you speak in the spirit every bondage every addiction is broken over your lives in jesus amen hira ba shekhe amen korobo shikara ba every chain every bondage be broken in the mighty name of jesus korobo shekara ba ri andorobo from today transform because you are filled with the holiness of God you are sanctified by the fires that proceed from heaven kira ba shekala ba korobo shekere be korobo sarabari andorobo rila ba shekere be ria kala ba ria andorobo rila ba shekala ba korobo every sickness every disease that has been caused by the bondage of sin be broken right now in Amen. jesus name let there be healing that takes place right now in the mighty name of jesus as every chain is broken every bondage is broken right now let there be healing that takes place in the name of jesus rikara ba shorobo lira ba shekere be shorobo rikala ba riandara ba she robo ro thank you lord for eyes are being open spiritual eyes are being open and blindness every veil that is over the eyes of the people are being removed right now in jesus name kire be shokorobo lira ba shokorobo ni andara ba ko the cleansing fires of god the cleansing fires of god kire be shokorobo liba Every unclean spirit, every 
spirit that causes adultery to take place, we break it right now in Jesus' name. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. It has no place to live inside the temple of God. It has no room to live inside the people who are filled with holiness. Right now, we cast you out in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, that today we are going to go from here people who are filled with the holiness of God, who are filled with the glory of God, filled with the fire of God, and we will go out to the highways and the byways, and we will preach and carry the presence of God when we go there. You are the temple of God. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You carry His glory and His presence within you. Come on, lift your hands and bless the name of the Amen. living God. For He has blessed you this day. Amen. He has sanctified you this day. He has cleansed you this day. Amen. We read in the word of God <coughs> that when Jesus performed a miracle, after he was done, he tells the person who was forgiven, he says, go and sin no more. Let it be a reminder you, to you today, even as you are filled and even as you are cleansed, even as you have been refined, as you step out from here, let your lives never be the same. Do not fall back to your sin no more because right now you are filled with holiness and the Holy Spirit will help you to overcome. You are called to be an overcomer. Amen.